All right, so let's go ahead and continue reading how the Most High Yahweh chooses the people who he will have close to him. This is Numbers chapter 16, verse 5. Then he said to Korah and all his followers, In the morning Yahweh will show who belongs to him and who is holy, and he will have that person come near him. The man he chooses, he will cause to come near him. Alright? And now it says here, you, Korah, and all your followers are to do this. Take censers, and tomorrow put burning coals and incense in them before Yahweh. The man Yahweh chooses will be the one who is holy. You Levites have gone too far. You see? You see that? So you see why the Most High Yahweh is choosing to date. Who will be his Levites? Who will be his priest? Right? Remember that? We don't have to pull that scripture up, right? Shall we? In Isaiah. And I will choose Levites from among them. They will be my priests. We don't have to pull that up because it's there. The scriptures of the Most High is what we use to defend ourselves. Whenever the, these wicked people, right? Whenever these people got something to say against what we believe in, we cut them with the word of the Most High. All right? That's the reason why, you know, we're going to talk about this probably in another video. Or if we got time, we'll bring it out. But that's the reason why you, brothers and sisters, are going to be clothed in linen. There's no need for you to be slicing these people with the word of the Most High. Stay to yourselves and do what you have to do. Continue to be holy. That's the reason why, and I'm not trying to brag or boast, but the Most High has put me here. Your job is to remain holy. There's no need to get your garments splattered, right? So... Let's go ahead and continue. Psalms 65, verse 4. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. And what's that? That's the word of the Most High Yahweh that is in our mind. How do you think I was able to put this video together through the Spirit of Yahweh? Because my garden, right, allow me to harvest, you know, the fruitful thoughts, to, to put them in a video so that you may understand this. This is how we are filled with the good things of Yahweh's house, His words, all right? Yahweh has a house in the heavens above. So we, His people, are considered to be part of that house. The good things that are above, they're going to be you know, bestowed upon us here on the earth. That's what it means. We are filled with the good things of your spiritual house, right? From above, of your holy temple, which comes down to us, his people. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. The most high, our savior. Not no Jeebus guys. Not no Jesus Christos. Not no Muhammad. Not no Shiva Buddha. No, it says Yahweh, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. See that? The hope of all the ends of the earth. That means of those who are dwelling on this earth, whether you are near or far. You need Yahweh in your life. All right? Isaiah chapter 49, verse 4. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is in Yahweh's hand, and my reward is with my power. And now Yahweh says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and to gather Yasharal to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of Yahweh, and my power has been my strength. He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Yashara I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. See that? Just like we read in Psalms 65 and 5. The hope of all the ends of the earth. That is Yahweh. 
all nations must seek Yahweh in these times and in these days. Okay? And now for our people. This is why Yahweh says in Isaiah 52 and 3, You were sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed, because that's all that's in the mind of the people. To make money, to work, 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 you know? To stress yourself. That was the curse that befell Adam, mankind. You were sold for nothing. You see that? Now it's time for you to rise up from confusion. Rise up from darkness. Micah 5 and 7. The remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of many peoples. Like dew from Yahweh. Like showers on the grass. Which do not wait for anyone. Or what? Or depend on men. Have we depended on men to acquire this knowledge that was given to us from the Most High? No. Okay? This is what the Most High Yahweh is doing. He's giving us the dew of the morning. The dew from Yahweh. Like showers on the grass. We don't wait for anyone. This is the mindset that we are in today. This is the kingdom of Yahweh being built before your face. The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations, in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a lion among flocks of sheep, which mauls and mangles as it goes, and no one can rescue. Okay? How are we doing this? In righteousness. Your hand will be lifted up in triumph over your enemies, and all your foes will be destroyed. You see that? All your foes will be destroyed. How? By the word of Yahweh. Trust and believe that. I promise you. Trust in the word of Yahweh. That is all that we need. We need no weapon. No physical weapon at all. Trusting his word is our defense. It's our offense. This is how we defend ourselves. This is how we attack. Yahweh's word is our shield. Is our sword. Okay? So in righteousness, these other nations are going to get cut down. That's how the mountains will be drenched with blood. In righteousness. Job 31 and 23. For I dreaded destruction from Yahweh, and for fear of his splendor, I could not do such things. If I have put my trust in gold or said to pure gold, you are my security. If I have rejoiced over my great wealth, the fortune my hands have gained. If I have regarded the sun in its radiance, or the moon moving in its splendor, so that my heart was secretly enticed and my hand offered them a kiss of homage, then these also would be sins to be judged, for I would have been unfaithful to the Most High on high. See that? Anything you put before the Most High is an offense to Him. So again, the mindset of the people is work, work, work. They don't got no time for the Most High, but the Most High Yahweh says, you know, you were sold for nothing, and without money, you shall be redeemed. Pay attention to the word of Yahweh. Pay attention to what's going on. Listen. All right? Listen. Psalms chapter 3, verse 7. Arise, Yahweh, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From Yahweh comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. The people who honor the Most High. Those are His people. Let us read from the Book of Enoch. This is chapter 56. This is chapter 46. And we're going to go ahead and start from verse 1. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man. And his face was full of graciousness, like one of the holy angels. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning that son of man, who he was and whence he was, and why he went with the head of days. And he answered and said unto me, This is the son of man who has righteousness, with whom dwelleth righteousness, and who revealeth all the treasures of that which is hidden. Because why? Because Yahweh, the Most High, has chosen him, and whose lot has the preeminence before Yahweh, the Most High, and a brightness forever. So, I'm going to share this with those who believe. Adam was considered all of them together. They were the Adamites. 
Adam was considered mankind in general. But this first spirit created was who they call Gabriel. This is the reason why all of this is happening now in these times and in these days. Because the Most High Yahweh has chose the first spirit created that taught humans all things to come back and teach them the things that they were supposed to know. And you may not understand this or accept this now, but this is the reason why in due time all of this is going to be shown to you. All of this is going to make sense to you. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 5. This is why Yahweh says, Cries of fear are heard, terror, not peace. Ask and see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Every face turned deathly pale. How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. On that day, declares Yahweh Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve Yahweh, their God. That this is what the Most High Yahweh said that he was going to do. Okay, he was going to basically raise up a leader for their people. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 Rejoice greatly, daughter to Zion. Shout, daughter Yarawashalem, see your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. These scriptures here, they go hand in hand with the prophecy of Joseph, you know, where Joseph had a dream where, you know, his fathers and mothers and brothers were going to all bow down to him this is what it all meant and like i said in due time you're going to understand this you have to put your mind to it pay attention all right pay attention because all of this is going to be given to you without cost i will take away the chariots from aparium and the war horses from yarawashlam and the battle bow will be broken he will proclaim peace to the nations his rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 18. This is what Yahweh says. I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins and the palace will stand in its proper place. From them, from us, will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing. I will add to their numbers and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor, and they will not be disdained. Their children will be as in the days of old. See that? Like the first generation of Adam. And their community will be established before me. I will punish all who oppress them. Their leader will be one of their own. Their ruler will arise from among them. Here's the key point. I will bring him near, and he will come close to me. For who is he who will devote himself to be close to me, declares Yahweh. This spirit that the Most High Yahweh said that he was going to bring in the last days is the same one who was going to be raised up to, to understand who he is. You understand that? Like it says here in the book of Enoch, and it says, verse 5, and he shall put down the kings from their thrones and kingdoms, because they do not extol and praise him, nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. And he shall put down the countenance of the strong, and shall fill them with shame. So this is the times that we're living in. This is why it says again, Yahweh will take away the chariots from Aparium and the war horses from Yarawashalem. The next verse says, so you will be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the storm of Yahweh will burst out in wrath, a driving wind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The fierce anger of Yahweh will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come, like we always say through the Spirit of Yahweh, in days to come, you will understand this. Deuteronomy 17 and 15. Be sure to appoint over you a king, Yahweh your God chooses, 
He must be from among your fellow Yasharalites. Do not place a foreigner over you, one who is not a Yasharalite. The king, moreover, must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to get more. For Yahweh has told you, you are not to go back that way again. So you see why the war horses will be cut off, the chariots from Aparium will be cut off. You see that, right? Because they all want to be kings and they have too much of this. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 44 Like a lion coming up from Jordan's thickets to a rich pasture land, I will chase Babylon from its land in an instant. Who is the chosen one I will appoint for this? Who is like me and can challenge me? And what shepherd can stand against me? Zechariah chapter 6 verse 12 Tell them this is what Yahweh Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the branch. And he will branch out from his place and build the temple of Yahweh. It is he who will build the temple of Yahweh, and he will be clothed in majesty and will sit and rule on his throne. He will be a priest on his throne. And there will be harmony between the two. And so that's the reason why the Most High Yahweh says, you know, in these times and in these days, he's going to raise up who he's going to raise up. He's going to bring them close to him whether the people understand it or not. But this is not their words. Ezekiel chapter nine, verse one. Then I heard him call out in a loud voice, bring near those who are appointed to execute judgment on the city, each with a weapon in his hand. And I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen who had a writing kit at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the Most High of Yashara went up from above the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then Yahweh called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side. He said, Go throughout the city of Yarawashlam and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. That's the days that we're living in. You see that? The time of compassion, of pity, is, is, is done. The time where the men clothed in linen, it's about to be done. 